meeting for personal personal use must notify the chairman in advance. And I am the chairman, Julie Wigglesworth. And once again, I just want to welcome everybody. And uh, so first uh, item up uh, on our agenda here is meeting minutes for approval of December 6th uh, meeting. Any, um, to the commissioners, any questions or concerns on the meeting minutes? I'm good. Okay. And if there is no discussion on the meeting minutes uh, for approval of December 6th, could I get a motion for approval of the meeting minutes, please? I'll make the motion to approve the meeting minutes for the meeting of December 6th, 2021, as written. I second. I second. And with the first, Robin with the second. All right, Dr. Jewell. Yes. Uh, Mr. Bach. Yes. Mr. Duteau. Yes. Mr. Wigglesworth. Yes. All right. Um, next item up on the agenda here is request for determination of applicability, also known as RDAs. Um, to Bates Crossing Road, Mr. LaFambroy looking to uh, file his chapter 91 for an existing dock license. Um, we, uh, Mary has reached out to uh, Mr. LaFamroy and he is going to uh, continue, excuse me, continue his um, permit to January 3rd. So I need a motion for continuance of 23 Bates Crossing Road to January, uh, excuse me, two Bates Crossing Road to January 3rd, 2022. I motion we continue two Bates Crossing until uh, a continuance till January 3rd. Second. Robin with the first, Dan with the second. Dr. Jewell. Yes. Mr. Bach. Bach. Yes. Mr. Juto. Yes. Mr. Wigglesworth. Yes. All right, great, thank you. All right, so next up we've got public hearings, notices of intent, also known as advice. Um, first up here is 23 Lakeview Road. This is Webster Ventures LLC, represented by Mr. Balsowitz. There he is, Mr. Steve there. Um, construction of a single family home, uh, including a footpath and dock. Uh, we heard this the last two meetings, and we just needed an updated plan from Steve, which I believe should be in everyone's email. Um, uh, well, I'm putting it on the screen here. I didn't okay. forward it yet. Oh, Steve. <laughs> you can hear us, right, Steve? Yes. Okay. How you doing? I'm doing well. Yourself? Okay, thanks. All right. So we had a question of the uh, Do the you want me to explain what I did? Um, yeah, why don't you show us, uh, talk to us. All right, too. so let's look at the docks first, since that's up. Uh, if you can pan up or zoom out. Is that good, Steve? Uh, zoom out so we can get the full picture of all the docks. What we did was since the last meeting, uh, there was a question on the dock going straight out. Uh, I went out there and we located the docks at Indian Ranch, as you can see uh, where they're located. Uh, what we plan to do is have a, I have my plan up a 50 foot dock going straight out and we're gonna remove the hatched area of Indian Ranches docks, which are licensed. Uh, we're gonna remove that section and then you can see the closest portion to, and I'm sorry, but I'm looking at my plan on my computer. We yes. have 40, 40 feet dimensioned there. Okay, across. So, uh, correct. So it allows boats to go in and 
pack their boats and we can do the same on the proposed dock at 23, supposedly 23 Lakeview Road. Uh, the second item that was in question, or not in question, but I provided on the plan, along the southerly property line, I provide a three signs at its third points going down the property line. I only call out one, the one near the water, but you can see that I show three signs up the property line to Lakeview Road. One at the entrance, one in the middle, and one towards the end of the property. Okay. The other thing, uh, the other item that you had questioned or wanted me to show was the 100 foot buffer zone to, and we show it the 25, the 50 and the 100, which is way off the lot. If Mary could kindly zoom out, you can see the whole plan. Well, this plan is not good. You got to go to my, the other plan that shows the whole lot. Is that, did, uh... I believe it's one. Yes, that's it. No, that's three. We want one. Yeah, that's it. And you can see I show the 25, uh, including the intermediate and uh, 50 and the 100, which is way off the lot. I believe those were the only three items and the DEP file number, which I have yet to get. Okay. Um. So, I mean, the main concern from the last meeting that I can remember was they were just uh, worried about the uh, proximity of the do of the docks. Um, that was more or less the uh, the main concern from the last meeting. Um, the um, Mary, if you could just scroll down a little bit. So there's approximately 40, 40 feet of clearance there for navigability. Which and is uh, wider than a road. Okay. Steve, can we get these, can we get these signs like I'm presuming that some of this vegetation is staying and it's kind of like a natural vegetation to be part of the 30%. Can we get these signs like along the edge of that line so that people know that they're not supposed to disturb this area between the, the, the property and, because this is part of your 30%, right? Yes, but, but Mary, you have to understand how surveyors and engineers do their topography. When I call a tree line, I'm looking and I look up at the canopy of the tree. So I'm out from the tree. And if it's a large tree, obviously it has a large canopy, but that's why you see all the undulations. And when you draw an AutoCAD, it's a command called tree line. So I connect all my points with a straight line and then it draws a tree line. So those signs would be clearly visible because uh, there's all oaks. And I'm not so, so much worried about the visibility of the signs. I'm more worried about the fact that um, the part of the property- we don't, want, we don't want creep on that stream, Steve. So if we can come back a few feet away from the the top of the bank, that would be great. Maybe what we should do is I show the signs, I call yeah. them out, uh, put it as one of the conditions that your agent, Mary, will, they'll walk the site and put these signs where the board would like them. Perfect. <laughs> is that That's acceptable? That's okay with me, as long as, you know, 
I mean, these signs, if I would actually go locate one of them as shown on the plan, it may fall in the middle of a six inch oak tree. Well, I yeah, exactly. no, I know, I know. So when so, we get to that stage, you know, Mary can, you know, we'll make sure that uh, Mary walks that with you. Um, well, with the, the owner and, and, and they can determine which she would like or the board would like. I'm not, not Mary individually, the, where the board would like the signs. Now, my question is on here, Steve, is I see the setback lines. I see the 100 year flood. I see the buffer. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The erosion sediment control line. How were we setting that up from the 25 foot over to how far to the other side of the path towards the brook? All right, what we'll do is we'll start at uh, where I have utility pole up on the north, northerly corner. Let's start yeah. there. Yes, right oh, there. Yeah. All right, so I come from that point, okay. you, you can see it going out in the street and yeah. it pretty much hugs that property line all the way down until we get to the 25 foot resource area buffer zone line. And then we run parallel to that down along the cot path to the dock. Along the dock, it's probably eight or 10 feet. Are you following me? Yep, I see it now, Steve. And then it um, parallels the path only until we have to jog out to be able to plant the trees and the shrubs and the pond. The, not, I, it's not a pond, it's a depressed area to collect water, recharge the groundwater table. It goes around that mm -hmm. straight up to the road to where it says benchmark number two. Okay. Um, so first phase, commissioners, any questions, discussion on the development piece of the property? I think we've pretty much satisfied everything that we've asked. I, I have one question for Steve. Sure, um, Dan. The removal of that last dock that belongs to Indian Ranch, have you discussed that with them and they've agreed to do that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Steve, we're going to need, because I know that um, Mr. Roberts is, is involved in development in this area. We're going to need to get something from whether you provide it for him with a letter, a letter. to his signature. his signature. We should probably, because you're modifying an existing marina, we should probably get an updated, um, just an updated map for Indian Ranch. That, that's going to be removed. Uh, that may take a little bit of time. I'd like That's, to close this hearing based on what I got. Not tonight. Because no, I know, but you're modifying. He would but, provide the town, the Conservation Commission, a letter saying that he would revise his dock according to this plan. I don't have I, what issuing a letter for that. I'm, I'm not saying right now, Steve, I'm just... But letting you know that that's what we're going to be looking for because you're modifying an existing dock. But what I'm asking the board is at the next meeting, should we get a DEP file number? Yeah. That the meeting would be closed with the issuance of a letter from the owners of Indian Ranch saying that they would modify their docks yes. according to this plan. Provided that the board votes that way, yes. All right. Okay. Um, all right. Any other questions on the development phase? I'm good. Uh, Karen, I think you get questions. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What was the uh, three foot wide path uh, made out of? Steve, did I, you hear that? No, I did not. What What is the three foot path on the uh, property being made of? I know you mentioned it. Uh, what they're going to do is they're going to obviously clear the path of 
debris and stuff like that uh, and construct it out of stone dust. I think I call it down, call it out. I got to look on my plan. <laughs> It's not going to be any pavement, if that's what she's asking. It's, It'll be stone dust, and uh, it won't be pervious pavers or anything. It's just going to kind of be natural. Uh, all the area, all the soils in the area, should, typically a gravel, and uh, they won't be disturbing much other than scraping up the loam and putting the, some stone dust down. Okay, thank you. You're All welcome. Right. Thanks. All right, so now the dock, the last piece. Um, concern of it impeding on the navigability of the marina that is at Indian Ranch. Um, see if that's four feet wide and 50 feet long. That was the dimension, right? Correct. And did you do the side bathymetry drawing or sketch? What I will do is see, this is where I get confused. What I Everyone would do gets is, confused with this. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what I would do with this is I'd like to get your approval so I can move on to DEP. And I would gladly submit uh, the two pages that they require showing the profile, the lake depth at that point yeah. obviously i can't get out there but it's pretty deep because i did all the other docks uh and i would provide you with a copy of the permit that we send to dep and it would be 50 by four feet wide the 50 by four feet wide is good but once again we need you to show us the dock it's width, it's square footage, it's length, which you've got on there, but we don't have the square footage. I yeah, think, it's, right? it's, it's on 200. there. 200. 200 yeah. square feet. For the next meeting, because obviously we can't close this out because of legal mechanisms right now, you, you need to show us that side profile with, with the bathymetry, how many feet deep it is and how it's gonna be anchored. That is a, that's an important piece of this. I understand that. But say, uh, yeah. Do we have a buyer for this house? Do we know that that's what kind of dock they want? That's what I'm wondering. This is all has to be fictitious. Okay. It's proposed. That's what it's supposed to be. That's what I'm going for a <clears throat> license for. The board okay. either has to approve it or disapprove it, and I move on. But what I'm saying is. I don't know. The next people may come in to, to and that's, do it differently. And to be honest, and Steve, that's up to the next owner to let us know or for us to say, hi, welcome to the neighborhood. We're from conservation. We need, you know, your permit says this, but we notice that you've relocated your dock or you changed the, the you know, the way that it's all um, put together. So the, the, the only the thing, thing is that the thing I want to get back to is that you want to profile in the depths. Well, what happens in the case that you approve this and DEP denies it? That's, a, that's DEP. Or if what they, happens if, if you they, deny it and they approve it? Dave, if, I'm going to tell you something. If we approve something on the local level, unless there's a major departure from what you file, they shouldn't deny it because they're they're expecting a local level to to understand and know what the what the laws are. And that's something that we've kind of been we've sort of been kind of taking the ball and throwing it back and forth. And we're trying to you know we're trying to get a, a handle on this this particular law. Why why do they call it a simplified license? 
That's you know what? That's about I seventy. Look at the other one. That's <laughs> about seventy pay grades above me. So, <laughs> All right. um, uh, it's so, not simplified. It's not general. It's I mean, it's just the way it's the way it is. So it could be a complicated license. It, no, I understand it. I, I completely get it. Um, so, so let me just reiterate. Based well, on what you see here, everything I'm all set on, and I will provide on this plan a little detail showing the yeah. anchoring system. In order for, for us to slam dunk this for the next meeting with your DEP number, we need that side profile. That's your missing piece here. I, Commissioners, Steve, and I, I, if I can, If I can, let me throw this in here for you, Steve. If we approve this proposed dock, that's the only configuration of a dock the next owner can have. They can't, they can't come in and put a different length, a different shape or anything. If you wanna, if you apply for a four foot wide by 50 foot long dock and we approve that and DEP gives a license for that, that's the only dock that's allowed. What happens in the unless, case? What unless, happens in the case? DEP disapproves that. So now you already issued an order of conditions with this configuration. Then what happens? Well, if the DEP DEP doesn't give a license for what we've already approved, then it's kind of back to square one about why did they not approve it? And you're supposed apparently to they want you to make some adjustments to that. You're supposed to provide it to us, Steve, as to if, if DEP has comments, Mary will get them and it'll all it'll all fall in sync. Um, so anyways, going back to this, we need that side profile for the next meeting. That's and, not a problem. And, and if and if there is any change or departure from that for the next owner, they need to provide their change to the state and then they need to notify commission. There, there's a whole legal mechanism there. So I know I'm not a lawyer and nor are you, and it's hard no, to understand. No, what I'm, right. I'm the science guy. So <laughs> I understand everything that the board wants. Uh, uh, I don't have any other comment. I'll show that profile. Yeah. And Mr. Chairman. Fred. Yeah, go ahead, Fred. Sorry. I'm going to keep Steve from getting his feet very cold. If he goes out and looks at the license for Indian Ranch, yep. they have the uh, depth gradient already marked off with uh, a dock of, I believe, the same length. So he should be able to just lift his profile from uh, that topo map that's yes. already on a license. No, yep. we have that data. We file all that data when we go to the, the, to the next step. Yep. I haven't gone to the next step because my son has put the whole thing together with the depth chops and, and we know. Usually what I do is it's existing docks. So I can walk out to the end of the dock and stick the rod down and see, measure the depth. Yeah. It's simple over here, we didn't have a dock. Right, I was just saying that, you know, what you're trying to do is find the bottom. So if you already have a topo, you don't have to uh, physically wait out there to get that information. Oh, I wouldn't wait out there. <laughs> there should be also for, for anyone in the audience, there should be, and, and if you're going through your chapter 91 license or you're curious about this process, it is a lengthy process, unfortunately, um, but there is a layer in what will be, it was Mass Oliver, it's Mass Mapper after uh, January 1st, and there's a data layer in there. And if anyone needs help, we, we contact our office and we can help you out. So, all right, Please. commissioners, any other any other feedback for Steve for the next meeting? Karen, I think you were just yes. gonna say something. Um, I think it would be beneficial um, to see the docks on either side of this particular lot, um, if they are permitted, because the 50 foot long dock is uh -huh. so long, the abutter to his left, um, I don't know which way is north, but the abutter to the left, the one that I says um, dwelling, show, okay, the one that shows the, the home, like yeah. what does that dock look like? And do those people now have to 
go 50 feet out away from the shoreline, you know, take a right, take a left to get to their dog? I have an answer for that. Okay. okay. Uh, number one, we are allowed to have a dock up to 600 square feet on our plaza. Number two, uh, we show that we comply with the 15 foot from the pipe over. We're actually 16 feet over. Yep. And the house next door, uh, which is 23, no, 25. What's the number on there? 23. Twenty-three does not have a dock permit, and my client owns all the properties. Yeah, so it looks like the closest dock is this one. This is the property, which is centered. And then these these two houses don't have docks. Okay, uh, just a quick response to that, Steve. Um, I understand that you are, um, you know. Uh, within your rights on the the distance and the width, but also it is up to the commission to decide if you're impeding upon the lake to the extent that you're hurting or harming the abutters navigability to their property. So just because you want 50 feet doesn't mean that you get 50 feet. That's is, my humble is, opinion. Is that your opinion? because DEP issues the license, the actual license. The commission is the first uh, round before you get to DEP. That's uh, why you go through so, this process, Steve. So I guess what you're telling me is I have to locate all docks and go on abutting properties to our mm -hmm. site. We're not, in, we're not in one of these narrow coves. This happens- No, and I, no I get it, Steve, coves. but- Steve, Karen has a point. We need to know where the net, where the others are. So if you need to bump over to 20 feet instead of 16, we need to account for that. So no, I would just. Uh, I don't think so because there is, I'm leaving a 40 foot width there between the end of my dock and the docks at Indian Ranch. 40 feet is a lot of area. Steve, that's, and, out, in, that's out on the open water. And. So, where is he gonna go? He's gonna drive out to the open water. Well, if your dock was 30 feet long, he would have you know 20 more feet to drive into. So that's just and, my point. And then we may not have the depth for his boat. That's why we're asking for the yeah, bathymetry. Yeah. That's why the state wants you to have the bathymetry so that the, the so that we can look at the I will abutting properties. The bath, I would provide the bath imagery for this dock here. That's not a problem. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll use this, we'll use this graphic that we have in front of us in the permitting process on January 3rd, and we'll discuss the dock again. Uh, one comment that I have is yeah. that when I watch your meetings, yeah. all the other docs that you're asking me to provide you information on are asked yeah. the same. Because I think this is going way above what we actually need to do. It's a 50 no. foot dock, 200 square feet. I show I got a 40 foot opening between the end of the dock and Indian Ranch's docks. Steve, an applicant is required to provide a municipal or state board whatever they ask for in order to be able to make an, a, a, an, a, 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 an opinion and a vote. So, I mean, we can go around and around on this as, as well, much as you want. It's we, not a matter we of have a, We have a good working relationship, Steve. So why don't we just provide the board and let's move on with business tonight? But all I'm asking is everybody be treated equally. I don't and that's have a problem with and, that, and you want to know state. something, Steve? We do treat everyone equally. It's, you know, we're, we're obviously, you realize that the town, as a great pond, we have to, we have to uphold the law and we have to uphold regulations supporting the law. And that's what we're doing. 
and I appreciate that. You're you're one hundred percent correct. Because and not I, every, I like not to every protect filing, that wetland. Not every filing is the same, Steve. You know that. So they're not. No, no. they're not. <laughs> I know that. So. All right. And anyway. that being said, I'm to provide a profile, a depth chart. That profile. And just let us know the other two docks, where they are located and approximately right. the distance from each. And if, that's, they don't, that's if, they, if they don't have a license, then I don't have to say that they have a dock. Well, from what I understand, I think, th doesn't your boss own most of the property there? So if he's got other yeah. docks in that area, I would tell well, him to have them no license on 23. Oh. All right. <laughs> Thank All you right. very much. Hey, everybody you. have a happy holiday. Happy New Year. And happy holidays, Steve. You too. And to all, all right. the board members. Thank you. All right, Thanks, commissioners, Steve. can I get a motion to continue 23 Lake uh, View, Lakeview Road to January 3rd? We still need the DEP number and um, the uh, additional information on getting the dock approved. I'll make that motion. All right, Dan. I second. Dan with the first, Robin with the second. Dr. Jewell. Yes. Mr. Bach. Yes. Mr. Duteau. Yes. Mr. Wigglesworth. Yes. All right, folks. Um, Thank you, our... Merry Christmas, oh, Steve. All right, thanks, Steve. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Uh, rounding out the public hearings, NOIs 29 Beacon Road is continued to January 3rd. We made that motion two meetings ago. Um, all right, on to discussion items here. We've got 33 Wheeler Park Road. This is Mr. Wilson um, for his Chapter 91 Simplified License. Mr. Wilson, how are we doing this evening? I'm doing fine. How are you people doing? Hope you're all, right. all doing well. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, we're doing, we're doing well. Um, so um, you, I, I assume you've got the supporting documentation that we asked for during the last meeting. I believe um, I do, um, yes. Okay, um, all right, Mary, could we pull up um, that information? Yeah, I'm working on it. So that's just sort of an outline of what it is that you requested at the last meeting. Okay. Um, and the first item is a, the assessor's map. Okay. The first, um, so that's the assessor's map prior to subdivision. Okay. Uh, the second item is the subdivision plan with my hand-drawn sketches of the neighbor's docks, okay. hand-drawn sketch of an imaginary line going from my property boundaries outward, showing no, no encroachments. Yep. Um, okay. And just so everyone recognizes, this is a while wheel of road and this is, this is not a constrained um, cove. This is out out in the open water. Right, and it's flat. It's uh, yep. th there are no curves to the to the shoreline. Yes. Uh, and this is as you also requested a blow up of on a separate sheet of the proposed dock. Um, one thing that I, I will point out, I have not changed the uh, the width at the end of the dock, two four foot sections, and I'll go over that. In a, in a minute, but you also asked me to show the jet ski uh, dock, which I do there. And I also show, uh, it's an additional 312 feet. I tried to estimate that. Um, is that so those the are the total? Is it the total? Yeah, it's the footage? total. It, okay. Yeah, it was 296 and I, I just estimated, I added a, another 25 feet or so on for the jet ski uh, dock portion. Absolutely, yep. Um, and one thing I do want to point out in that, that slide, the, the one uh, 
So it's 28 feet on one side, 23 feet on the other side, the center of the dock, which I, I think uh, you may have a question about, but the center of the dock is 25 feet from one side and 30 feet from the other boundary. So if you and, took that 28 feet and added two feet to it, that would be the center of the dock. If you took on the other side, 23 feet plus two feet, that would be the center line on that. So that's 25 feet and 30 feet. Okay. Lot line is, is 55. Um, so with, with regard, I know, I know you're gonna mention it in a, in a moment, Mr. Wilson, but um, with regard to uh, Commissioner Cirillo's concern of the four foot section side by side like that. Mm -hmm. um, yes. As as you are are more than likely aware, the, the commission is trying to get its arms around the totality of what to expect and and whatnot. And I have looked significantly through a lot of um, my documents that I have, um, including the law, and I'm not exactly quite sure. Um, you know, Ms. Shirillo is is very well versed in this stuff, and I'm not exactly sure where she got that you can't have two four foot sections well, it, side by I, side. I, I I did do actually quite a lot of research, including contacting the DEP, and the requirement for a dock that is no wider than four feet is for yep the general licensed docks. Okay. Yep. The simplified licensed docks do not have that requirement. Yes. And they don't have that requirement because they're required to be located in the center of the property lot, which uh -huh. mine is. So in order to, if the, the, the question was that, that she expressed was the dock can't be wider than four feet. And that is true if it is a simple, if it is a general license and the PowerPoint slides that you referred to last time, if you look at the, the title on those, they were for general licenses, not simplified licenses. So mm -hmm. I think I have, um, you know, I, I went and I studied the uh, Commonwealth of Massachusetts regulations, the CMR 310 section 9.10, which is, which is relates to uh, simplified docks and docks. And it, it has a requirement that it can't be greater than 600 feet. Yep. Um, there is, let me see where I, where I have it. Um, there are also another thing that, that applies to simplified license, uh, simplifying, um, I don't know if I have this. Uh, Mary, could you keep scrolling? I think I have this part. Um, yeah, so these are, that's the simplified license conditions. So it talks about all structures shall be set back a minimum of 25 feet from abutting property lines where feasible. And then this is the part that you're talking about where there is some confusing confusion and I believe it, it's very confusing, but I'll read it to you, 9C. Yeah. It says within areas of salt marsh, structures shall be constructed with a minimum height of four feet above ground level. So this is really talking about ocean water, I believe, and a maximum of four feet. Um, so it, that four feet does not apply because this is not a salt marsh. Um, you also, if, and I don't think I have it in front of me, but I can, uh, one of the requirements for the general license, which I believe Mr. Bach uh, showed last time on those PowerPoint slides that he went over, that does have a minimum, a maximum of four feet wide, but, that is for the general license, not the simplified license. It's very confusing. I, I, I sympathize with you having to try and deal with this, but there's also, so uh, Mary, if you scroll back up again, I was confused. I thought I had done everything right and read everything right. Uh, so um, no, keep, yeah, keep going one more. So I sent an email to 
Christine Hops, who's the assistant director of DEP waterways regulation. That's, that's my email to her. Uh, basically saying, I'm a little confused whether my doc complies or not. I sent her the same sketch that I just showed you without the, the uh, jet ski lift, uh, showing the boundaries, mentioning, mentioning the 28 feet, 23 feet, mentioning that doesn't encroach uh, and asked her if she might be able to help me. So the next slide down is her response. And the beginning of it is really just the in general information about simplified dock licenses, which is what I did in order to file it. And then you can read what she wrote back. Mr. Wilson, I have a, a one question and a couple of comments. Um, yes. When we talked to you last time, you expressed some concern that adding the jet ski lift would to the square footage would bring you over the 300 square foot mark. No, but it's, you, it's 600 you chose, feet. You didn't want to do that. No, well, I, I mean, I was incorrect about 300 square feet. 300, it is 600 square feet that is okay. the, the minimum. So I, I was confused. Uh, I mean, this is the first time I've actually tried to study this stuff. I find it quite confusing. Um, and that was why I, uh, I asked Mary if there was someone that she knew at DEP that I might be able to contact to get it clarified. I didn't... Um, as I think I told you last time, and I still feel the same way. I I, um, I want to do. I want to have a doc that complies with the regulations. Um, if it doesn't, then I'll change it. Um, but if it does, then I wanted to okay, I, have I, the doc that I chose. I have one more question, and before yes. I have a comment, um, okay. The section of your doc that is depicted as being eight feet by 20 feet. Yes, it's two sections, what, what I mean, is, it's four sections. Yeah, right. Uh, what purpose do you plan on using that wide section for? Fishing. Fishing? Okay. Okay. Fishing and, and sitting. Okay, here's, here's, my, sitting. here's my comment then. It, yes. Is, having gone through the regulations probably multiple times, I'm sure you must have seen more than once the statements that a private residential dock must, its configuration must be for water dependent activities. Meaning, you know, fishing could be one, but mm -hmm. docking your boat, uh, swimming, um, and of course, that's one of the reasons why, you know, we're talking about the whip. Um, so the burden of proof to an applicant is to explain. Now, in this case, you need to explain to us what water dependent activity makes it necessary for you to have an eight foot wide section of dock 20 feet long. Uh, well, I'd say, Dan, I mean, if you if Dan, you really want me to go go ahead and list the kids swimming Ms. at the end Ms. without Mr. falling Wilson, off the dock. Mr. Wilson, um, I'm, I'm going to interrupt here. I want the board to know and anyone that is in the audience to know mm -hmm. that under under the Public Waterfront Act, which is what this is, the water dependent uses of a dock are to fish, follow, and to navigate. And Mr. Wilson has already stated that he's intending on fishing. He is going to be obviously tying his dock up to it. I don't know if he's going to be eating any kind of fowl from Webster Lake, but <laughs> that's his, that's, that is Mr. Wilson's prerogative. So uh, although I, I do disagree with having them side by side in a deck format, which is not necessarily conforming to the, the general uses. If he is intending on using that for those three purposes, which are very much stated in the law, then I have to say that we have no choice but to move forward with this doc application. 
because at this time, because at this time, I mean, right now we are we're not as educated in this heavy law as we need to be. And I am working with actually Chrissy Hops and some other folks to get the commission and hopefully the public some education on, on this law so that we can get more compliance and so that we are we understand the law enough to be able to um, execute it significantly. Well, I, I have to disagree with one part of that, which is water dependent activity specifically means that it has to be used for purposes that are that cannot be done on shore. Uh -huh. So sitting in a chair, uh, enjoying the view, waving to the boats that are going by, does not meet that criteria. Now, I, I understand um, there are places, there are docks on a lake where people have that sort of thing, but those are not people that are before us asking for a permit to create something like that. So, um, yes, I'm sure Mr. Wilson and lots of other people might like to do that sort of thing, but as far as I can see, that's not a water dependent activity. Right, so the idea is you're not setting up like three or four chairs and like an umbrella and stuff like that. Thing. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But, I mean, that, those are things that can be done on shore. <laughs> yeah, you know, but I think I think what we're looking at is generally out of our scope or purview. So what we're looking at is to whether whether this conforms or not. He's submitted this to Chrissy Hops. Chrissy said, "All right, well, you don't meet this license. You meet this license." So. Also, we're, also looking, we're looking this, at a structure that's going from land under water, which is which this is fully in our scope of purview, but we need to, you know, I think we need to, you know. Mr. Wilson's Mr. Wilson's communication to Chrissy did not mention the the ski do lift, and it did not mention that there was. Um, 160 square feet of dock that's more of a patio than a dock. No, I, I don't. So I can't be sure, and nobody else can, if, if that information had been included, would Chrissy's answer have been the same? If you, I if, don't know. If you look at my email, you can see it, it. you're right. It did not include the, the jet ski lift, which is a, a metal frame, right. um, but it, did include everything else. It included no, a copy of the sketch from the last meeting. It, it, it included it. It also does not mention that a significant portion of the dock is eight feet wide. The no. sketch does. The sketch was pretty clear because okay. I sent her a copy you, of the sketch. You, oh, you didn't send her the copy? Of the yes, sketch. yes, okay. of course. Okay. That's why, yeah. I mean, that's why I'm saying, Dan, that, you know, she's reviewed this and she's guiding him down the right road. She's not saying that this isn't, this won't conform, it won't pass. So it's either, so we, you know, you switch to a general, per, I mean, you switch to a simplified or, you know, if you're doing simplified, it's this way. If you're in general, it's this way. So I um, sent her that plan without, and my email mentions it. And she references seeing the plan in her email back to me. The only thing it does not include is that the the jet ski dock lift. Okay. I, I, the only reason I'm objecting here, the biggest reason I'm objecting here, is that if we approve this dock as it's configured in this sketch, what do we do when the next person comes and that section is three sections wide? It's 12 feet by 20 or 16 feet by 20. It's actually a floating patio. How are we going to handle that if we if we do not quite understand this, then we should, I mean, it's winter. There's no rush on this. Then we should pass on this until we know what the rules specifically say is allowable. Well, this is the second meeting, Dan. So 
only with Mr. Wilson's approval can we move to, uh, you know, can we do a continuance? He has granted us a continuance already. The applicant has granted us that. If we, if we're asking for more information, then, and he's willing to provide that, yes. But if, you know, the applicant is sensing that it could be a, a denial, um, I'll be honest with you, um, a denial on this based on, and I mean, I work obviously professionally in this field, as you guys know, this, I, I'm going to be honest, the state is going to overturn it. So it would put undue, um, it would put undue, uh, uh, you know, drag on this for the applicant. Um, I'd like to with that, with that said, I am after this situation, um, I am looking to get training here and to um, have a spinoff working group of the commission so that we we don't have we don't keep bumping up against this. Okay, I'd, I'd like to add two things. To Go ahead, that. Karen. Um, Mr. Wilson was right in that he was referencing the, um, the general license you know, where it talked about the four foot wide dock. Mm -hmm. Also, when you look at the simplified license, uh, the sample plan that is also part of that, uh, you know, uh, package for chapter 91, when you look at the simplified license sample plan, you'll notice that all the docks shown on that aren't greater than four feet wide. So I, I think it leaves some ambiguity there on what we're looking at, um, because I also am not in favor of starting um, a precedent where people can start stacking uh, four foot wide docks and then end up with a deck in the you know middle of the leg. Um, but I do respect your opinion, of course, Mr. Chairman, but I just feel uncomfortable with the unknown today, especially when you look at the simplified plan sample plan and it shows four foot wide. Um, can I ask a question to Robert? Yeah, sure. Yeah, um, given this is an issue of the, the width of it, do you know how far you are from the neighbor next to you? From Given it does swing over to the right like that, there, that direction? Well, it, yes, it's, a, it's at least 10 feet, but if you scroll back up, Mary, scroll up, when you take a look at the yeah, this one, okay. the, um, the neighbor's dock is in the center of their property. It's very right. steep on those banks right there. Um, so so there's probably, that? how far, what do you mean, how far is it? From I think that's a 65, I think it's a 65 foot wide lot okay. along the shore. Um, so I think they're, they're right in the middle because it's, it's sort of centered where their house is. Um, they have stairs that sort of mm -hmm. go down and jog around, but come out in the center. Um, so it's, there's, there's plenty of room, I believe, there's, that nothing that I'll be doing will even be encroaching over that imaginary line because I don't plan on parking my boat on that side. I plan on parking my boat as you're looking at that, that map on the left-hand side. Um, and that's what I have, I have a pontoon boat and a jet ski. Um, so I, I, I don't believe in all honesty that there's a, any encroachment issue there. Okay. Given the width is the issue. So. Yeah. Mary, do you have feedback on this? Any feedback? Um, not really. Uh, nope. I mean, I'd, I'd be curious to see how many other people have. Well, that person looks like they have a triple wide <laughs> mm -hmm. going around the lake. That person. I mean, I I completely understand, and of course, I I always you know, I mean, I always support what's what's right. But and I mean, I understand a potential precedent that could be set with this, but I also look at, we have an applicant here that's looking to do the right thing. 
and you know we are you know providing what we can provide with the knowledge that we have on something that is pretty heavy so i i don't necessarily think that one could send a ripple effect across the entire lake you know, I, I think the board needs to consider if they're able to, if they're concerned about the four feet wide, maybe there needs to be a policy or a local bylaw enacted. Um, and that's, because that's the, the point that I was going to, that's the yeah. point that I was going to make later on in our discussion, yeah. we discussed chapter nine and one further was we got to come up with some sort of a policy that, you know, kind of itemizes things that we really are looking for and we're really looking to move forward with for protection um, mechanisms. I mean, if this was a really tight, um, you know, I mean, look at some of these coves. I mean, some people may have no choice but to jog them left, jog them right, or put two side by side. Um, but I mean, when we have an applicant that is has done his homework, done his research, um, isn't looking to do anything completely adverse, um, you know, I can't see any other reason than to, you know, and I mean, this is obviously just my opinion. I'm one person. So, um, but I mean, I have to look at what's right and what's what's wrong. And I don't believe Mr. Wilson's looking to do anything that is going to negatively impact the resource area. I, I hope, Mr. Wilson, that you understand that there's nothing personal in this, that as you discovered, it's very difficult to interpret some of that state written bureaucratic documentation and um we are so this is nothing uh to do with you personally it's has to do with what we think is best for the lake well i i understand that i uh you know one of the things that i you know after the last meeting i was so i was a little concerned about the way the meeting went i my family has lived on the lake since 1922. Uh, my father went to Bartlett High School. Um, so I'm a long time, I've spent every summer of my life in Webster Lake. I've seen it filled in. I've seen it, I've seen all sorts of things that you probably have too. So uh, I believe very strongly in the lake and, and the quality of the lake and, and uh, following the rules. Uh, that being said, that is why I also contacted DEP because I wanted their opinion. And her opinion was that my sketch, my plan was okay. So um, I, I agree with you as far as it goes that you don't want to set a bad precedent. But at the same time, I believe my doc, the way it is sketched out, complies with a simplified doc license application. Karen, you're on, uh, you're on mute. Sorry, um, was <laughs> there right. a profile submitted that we didn't see? Excuse uh, me? Was it, there was the profile that is part of the application process. I didn't see it. No, that that is there. It, it's not included in the things that we're going over tonight, but it, you did look at it last meeting and say, told me oh. it was okay. So it is part of the original package. Um, I'm pulling it up, I'm sure. Okay. Find it. Yeah, and I and just be I just be cognizant of the water-based use thing. And and if you know, I think the commission, if they do see people using their docks as decks with tables and dining furniture, you know, we might you might hear from us. So well, that was precisely what was going on down at Loveland. Yep, that's right. <laughs> so, um, well, I mean, like I like I mentioned, we've um, you know we've got some uh, a training opportunity coming up on Monday, actually Monday the third. Um, so, um, you know, there there's I guess an an option here we could ask. Um, Mr. Wilson, if you would be willing to um, graciously uh, continue until the board has had their training on the third in the afternoon and then have more knowledge of this law and answers from uh, Ms. Hawks. Um, 
or he could ask us to, to go to a vote on this tonight. I'd like you to uh, take it to a vote, please. Okay, yeah. All right, so with that, commissioners, any other, um, any other questions? Feedback from Mr. Wilson. All right, so um, if there are no more questions, um, do we have um, a, a motion on the table here to approve the Chapter 91 license to go to DEP for 33 Wall Wheeler Road? I motion we approve the license of 30, 33 Wall, Wall Wheeler. Okay. Robin with the first. I'll second. Um, Dr. Jewell. Yes. Mr. Bach. I'm going to vote no. Mr. Duteau. I'm afraid I have to join Mr. Bach. I'm sorry, Mr. Wilson. Okay, uh, Mr. Wigglesworth. Yes. So it doesn't pass, uh, fit, you know. Doesn't pass it, tonight. Yeah. Once we could it doesn't do pass tonight, right. Yeah, it doesn't mean, Bob, that you're, you know, you won't get it, but there's just more information. Maybe some modifications by you too. Well, with, a, with all due respect, if you look at the three documents that talk about the requirements for simplified docs, I've met all of those requirements. And I believe Chrissy Hops believes I do too. So um, I, I can understand that you may not, you may have a preference. You don't like, you know, you don't, you don't like the way it looks or you don't like something about it, but I believe it complies with the, with the regulations of the, uh, there are three different sets of instructions, regulations, and clarifications, it complies with all of those. Uh, uh, so I, I, I believe I believe what you're you're voting against. Uh, you may not like it, and I think that's why you're voting against it. But to me, I I think it complies, and that's the reason why I mm. drew it up the way I did. Did you have sure what the? Um, I'm not sure what if there's an appeal process here. I, I think what the commission can do, you know, typically I write a letter saying, you know, the commission approved, blah, 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 and I send it off to DEP. Um, in, in a case where we've only had one other denial, in that case, I wrote, you know, these were the concerns and I sent it off. And they, they just take our comments into consideration. I think well, I, they, they're the ones that make the final decision. So well, I also want to point out here um, that. Um, Mary, did we get a formal NOI or RDA for this? Yes, it's under um, Order of Conditions 323-1152. This, right, is, the this, is, under, this is under discussion items. Right, so it's, uh, but it is under, the, the, the NOI was approved years ago, or two years ago. It's, the house is being built, so I haven't been yep. out there lately, but uh, last time I was there, it was well underway. Um, this is the one, if you remember, Doug LaBelle did a lot of work near the shoreline. He found yeah. that huge concrete block. Yeah. This is that property. Right. Okay. So, I mean, we obviously have to let the state know, Mr. Wilson, that the commission by consensus is obviously denied, has denied due to concerns. Mm -hmm. um, but you are still, you know, I, I do want to let you know that you're still able to process that application to the state and the state can override. I mean, I don't think that there is an appeal. There shouldn't be an appeal process here because the layer that oversees this particular project is chapter 91. And if well, I believe there is an appeal. Is there an appeal? Okay. No. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, well, seeing how there, it's in that. In RDA, and we have um, done a vote on an RDA. I mean, legally, there would be a ten-day window on that for you. Well, so. no, no, Joey. This is remember, this is a discussion item because it's under that NOI. So. Oh, yeah, under the NOI, but yeah. there still is a ten-day um, appeal from 
when Mary issues and records that denial. I'm not sure on that, but anyhow. I, I think it's 30 letter. days. Yeah, I'll write a letter. And so the concerns were the double, the, the double dock, the double dock, right? Fred and Dan. Actually, I had one other, had one other concern. Sure, Fred, is, Fred. Uh, on the simplified license, it says it must uh, go down the uh, center of the property where feasible. And I really didn't hear anything in the discussions that gave a reason why it would not be feasible to have continued it down and possibly put a small a piece in front so that you, your dock and your boat were actually centered on the, on the uh, property. Uh, only because of the, the grading of the lot. It, I mean, it's very close to center and that's why I pointed out that this right, the center of the dock is, is at the center of the, the lot. Um, it really, uh, that, to me, it's okay. not really feasible to do it. That part I had no problem with. The problem where I really ran into the problem is that, yes, you connected to the land right at, right at the center line on your property. Mm -hmm. And you sat there and you shifted, shifted the outer section of the dock over 10 feet. Mm. So now you really, you're really not in my mind, complying with what it's what the uh, the uh, simplified said. So Fred, like you'd well, prefer to see like a U, like he could like set, put that, put a U like that, and that would a U would go out better. on both sides, and I mean it. Yeah. The a, a U would actually take up more space. I mean it, I, that was a configuration that I looked at, and I think we mentioned it at, at the last meeting. But to me, that takes up more sort of, of the of the water um it's it's more dock and it's uh it it does go out on both sides when well, you have a ask, shape let me ask you this mr wilson if you were to concede and do a u-shaped dock is that something that you would consider in order to have the board approve your dock no i don't i don't want that kind of dock Okay. I mean, I think that's sort I of just, a waste no, of, I, of no, time. I, and I, I, it's part of my job to ask those those questions. So, I mean, I, and again, I I told you at the at the last meeting that if the doc is not does not comply, then I'm happy to change it because Absolutely. I want it to comply, and that is why I spoke, why I I wrote to the DEP to ask that question for clarification. I believe the assistant director of waterways regulation gave me that clarification saying it's okay. Uh, she yes. didn't say, she saw the sketch. She didn't say anything about having any sort of issue with two sections that are four feet wide together. Um, and that was part of the reason why I sent it to her. That was the whole thing of the last meeting that everybody objected to so much. So I just wanted an answer from her, thinking she might have some knowledge on it. I, and you can read her email. It's pretty Chrissy, clear to me. Chrissy is the, the assistant, and she does do a lot of the training. So um, her and, and Dan Pageant. So, and, the, um, and that's the only reason why I came back with the same plan. If she uh -huh. had said no, I wouldn't have, I would have come back without those four foot sections there. Of course. Um, all right. Um, well, Mr. Wilson, um, the board uh, has voted, and uh, of course, the appeal process is, is there for you. So, okay. um, the, uh, the thing that I can say from this point, we're going to get educated, we're going to get our arms around this, and, and that's, that's a promise I can make you. I, I would say, that I was a little taken aback at the last meeting because I'd say 95% of the things that you, you and your board told me were incorrect. They applied to a general license, not a simplified license. So I went, I sat through that whole thing, you telling me what I can do and what I can't do, but it was based on 
incorrect information on your part. And um, I have to say, I'm, I was a little surprised that when I asked you for assistance and you told me, well, I have the burden of proof, you, can't, you couldn't point me towards the correct source of information. So I did it myself and I, I think I'm right. And I think you're being arbitrary in voting no, to be honest. I, I understand, I do. So, um, commissioners, any other comments before we have to move on? Okay, with that, um, Mary, um, you'll obviously get Mr. Wilson um, everything he needs in order for him to um, move forward whichever way he, he chooses. So, um, Mr. Wilson, thank you very much. Happy holidays. Thank you. You too. Thanks. Merry All right. Christmas. All right. Moving on, folks. Lakeside remodeling, permitting, and enforcement issues regarding 15 Wake Field. And I think I see Chad. Chad, you're yeah, here, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I believe Mr. Quinn, the homeowner, is here too. How are you? Okay. How you doing, Mr. Quinn? How you doing? I'm doing well, sir. All right. All right. Um, so, um, Chad, um, permitting and <coughs> what what's going on with Lakeside not pulling permits properly? Um, well, to be honest with you, I'm not trying to shoot any excuses out there, but I had some health issues where I was shipped to South Carolina to Boston. Uh, my business partner kind of put things to the side, didn't pay attention. Um, back now, my health is better. And as we met Saturday, I explained it. There's no excuses. We'd like to move forward and I'll deal with conservation and what's said by you guys to be done will be done at all times. Well, I'm going to I'm I'm tell you this. Better. I understand there's been a problem but with him going different ways, however you wanted to do it. So I'm here to correct it. Okay. Whatever the inner workings are in your, in your business is, is your business. But yep. as the leader of a local board, um, I have to tell you, you're putting a lot of um, undue and unnecessary stress and resources on the folks of who you're, um, who you're doing work for. Um, right. Folks that live in wetland areas, you have to check in with, with Mary and you have to check in with this board. We're not going to deal with this unpermitting stuff anymore. I uh, don't expect it's to. Gonna, you're you're going to get fined and the state is going to get involved. In yes. Yes. Do, and I, actually, have, um, do I have your understanding we, on that? I understand 100%. And okay. after we met Saturday, I sent an employee over there and he cleaned the area immaculate. Um, all that trash you see in that picture is trash that was dug up from before. Okay. That wasn't from us. Is stuff in there from 1970 something candy wrappers and everything all on the left right there. Yeah. That, that's not our trash. That was all in there. Mr. Quinn can verify that. That was all buried next to the old boathouse that was there that got torn yep. down. But that, that literally wasn't our trash, but we cleaned well, it up. There was, a lot of, there was a lot of garbage there and for everyone except for Fred. Um, Fred, we were part of the permitting process of getting that boathouse down several years ago, and that thing was chock full of garbage, so I wouldn't yeah. doubt it. Um, so we, we found clean that up. All right, so you've cleaned that up. Thank you very yeah. much. Moving on to the next item here. So we've got a structure that is where do we have a do we have a drawing what what's what's the structure i don't know if they have pictures on there uh, i might it's, have it's, just a 12, it's a 12 by 16 deck that goes over the boathouse landing okay and um it's pretty much complete except for a couple of railings you can see it there in the bottom picture oops okay that's what it is right there. That the old boathouse was above that. That's underneath is the water with the boathouse. Was Where there all, that, all the trash and everything was under there? Okay. Um, and then, go ahead. What about what about that where that connects to what looks like a terrace, that wall there? Is that wall new? 
No, that wall, we just put veneer over it. That's an existing wall, the back of a boathouse. So we filled all the cavities with rebar, yeah. concrete. I mean, everything was done properly except for the permitting. Okay. Now, how is this um, affixed to the ground? Did you have to dig holes in order to- There was, there was, already, there was already concrete existing concrete there that we put it yeah. on. We also used six inch, half inch lags, 15 yeah. of them to the old concrete wall. Okay. Now, um, Ted came now down here's... the and he said it looks great, but that's not to do with you guys, as I know. Um, the walkway, are you redoing the walkway too? Yes, on the side of the house up by the road. Okay, what, um, what are you doing with the walkway? It was an old brick walkway there that sunk, yep. and all the water was going to his house. Okay. So it basically just took all the bricks up. We're going to put more hard pack in there and divert the water away from the house with a one foot, three quarter stone barrier. So the water will run into that instead of going down to the lake. Okay. So you're doing permeable or uh, permeable? Yeah. Yes. Permeable or impermeable? Permeable. Okay. All right. Um, so the only the walkway, I can understand. I can see that, but this development that is right at the shore and goes over the water um that's something that we really should have been a part of and condition absolutely um, so the only thing is with this chad and mr quinn is cause this is right at the shoreline i'm i'm pretty sure that you're gonna have to go under do i dare say it chapter 91 Yes, um, we simple that form. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're gonna have to because this anything that is in the shoreline, um, <clears throat> is generally it's generally chapter 91. Um, right, if you're if you're doing any kind of you know, if you're even if you're coming back away from the wa water, any kind of that's why I asked you about the wall. Um, because I'm noticing a lot of walls being done and the walls need to have chapter 91 permits done based on their proximity if they're in the shoreline. Um, so, but seeing how there was a boathouse there, that raises a question with the chapter 91 folks is would you, would you have to go through the chapter 91 process and that i am not exactly i can't say yes and i can't say no well that's um, what i was wondering because we're building on the existing footings of an existing structure it's going over what used to be an existing structure right. so i don't know if that is considered um i don't know if it's considered a mute point i don't know if it's something that we but i think it's something we're going to have to um yeah i think we're going to have to talk to uh Somebody we'll have to 91. we'll have to bring this to our chapter ninety one meeting um, in two weeks, but in the interim, um, based on what I'm seeing here, you're going to have to go through the NOI process, even though it's what ninety percent done. Yeah. Are there any the other area. are there any other projects that you're doing in this general area, Mr. Quinn or, or Chad? Yes. No. Nope. Okay. Just that. Just the two. The deck and the walkway. Okay. Um, so I would um, I would definitely start the NOI process with this. Um, and then that way, if it's NOI, um, we can also, with, with that application, it'd be one application and we can actually pull your doc into that. So your doc is licensed, right. Mr. Quinn, rather than have you do an do a, a NOI for the, for the deck and then do a separate RDA for the, the dock. We can kind of rope it all in. So come on together under one? Yeah. So um, with the dock, we're going to need to know, as you probably heard from the last couple, we're going to need to know, see your plot, your plot plan, adjacent properties, where their docks are, how your dock is con configured, square footage of your dock. We've got all that stuff on the website, and Mary can... I would give Mary a, a ring this week. Um, yeah, so I saw it. 
I saw on your website and, and I was yeah. talking with, with, with Dan on, on Saturday and um, it, it, it is very overwhelming. And, it, um, it is. And we're, we're looking to try to make it as painless as possible. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I will tell you my dock, it is five feet wide. You know, yeah. I went with a, a wider one because it's, you know, it's more stable, right? It's the floating dock. Um, yeah. Obviously not knowing that, you know, four feet is, <laughs> is kind of what you all allow. Um, but I will tell you that where the concrete slab is, where the old dock, you know, was, it is yeah. pretty much, you know, center of the property. Well, here's the thing. If your dock, if you're just pulling, you know, you're just replacing what goes out over the water and that dock was, was there, if you can prove that that dock was there prior to 1984, you would just need to supply that to the state. They'll say, okay, thank you for your uh, chapter 91. Here's our comments. Here's your license. You're now grandfathered. So you won't have to in 15 years go through a 91 license again. So is it any dock or that particular dock? Your particular dock. If you've yeah, got no, I, a six I, 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 I bought that dock about two years ago. The dock I had was falling no, but apart. If it's, if it's what they're looking at, and this is the reason why it falls under our jurisdiction, is yeah. we regulate land underwater. And anytime a structure connects to the land, that's that's how the whole dock gets pulled into our jurisdiction. Yeah. And because this is considered a state body of water, that's kind of the umbrella that you fall under. So no yeah. matter how much that that dock out on the water, whether it configures, it rots out, you replace it, as long as it's connecting to the same area and you're not disturbing the shoreline, that can be, that they, they can and would consider that grandfathered. Okay, so I don't know how I can prove that was there. Satellite. What's that? Satellite and aerial photographs. Okay. Isn't there a and website you can, that you can go back and look? Yep. Yeah, that's the doc that we used to have right there on, on the screen. And I, again, that was far apart. I wanted something that was floating. But if it's connecting to the exact same location at the shoreline? It is. Yeah, there's all a concrete all that's patch changing, coming out. All that's changing is, like, say you made it a U. We would just yeah. need to look at it. We'd need to condition it appropriately. But the state could say that, oh, you know what, this is grandfathered. Here is your, you know, your, your license and you don't need to come back before us. Okay. Under under um, the simplified license, you get 15 years, and under the general, I think it's 30. Okay. So, Joey, so I have a like, question. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, just yeah. so it's um, just so, for safety reasons, it's about a three hours worth of work. Can we finish the railings over there for safety cause? They have a stop work on them right now, yeah. Joey. Um, it's just safety reasons. That's it. No, I understand that. Um, but, uh, well, I mean, that's really, it's up to the board. I mean, I could either be okay with with caution tape temporarily, or we can issue a temporary, a temporary order to allow the, the, the railings to be finished. That would be greatly appreciated. Just, you know, anyone can walk so, through caution tape and fall off it. If a railing's there, it's a little sturdier than caution tape. Even though it's not that high, but Chad, if we're gonna do that, I mean, does it make sense to do the stairs going down to the slab too? And or well, it, it depends at this moment right now what they'll allow us to do. Um, yeah. I'm mainly looking for looking to the well, rail and safety. I mean, I I see the safety angle of the chat also, but you're also looking for me to kind of help you out with that. So, in the grand scheme of things, how many times have I asked you guys to file with us, and you guys don't file with us? He, it's been many times. Okay. I'm not looking so, to deny anything, Joey. No, I I know what goes on in the lake. So, and I know who does what. So even if it's not, you know, you know, I catch him or I don't catch him. I, I know a lot. Um, so I just need you guys to file going forward or check in with Mary. There are certain aspects, even if it's replacing a deck or something that's up against the house, Mary can, you don't even need to come for some projects before the full board, it's just a simple, like, okay, you're replacing a fence, you're replacing a deck. Just come, you know, just, you got to check in with Mary and check in with the board. Absolutely. Okay. We will from, from this point forward. Absolutely. 
All right. So, um, yes. Um, I don't think there is any like real hazard in terms of like uh, falling off the deck. I don't even think it meets a three foot high minimum requirement. Um, so I, I, I don't think it's a good idea to add more work to something that you're not even sure if it's uh, permissible to build. Well, I mean, in all actuality, the, the building aspect of this is really put on hold from Ted. So if Ted releases that, oh, okay. then, you know, what really we're looking at which is the deck part in the stairs, that's pretty much already done. Um, it's really the building, you know, they are under st stop work order from both departments. So if we were to say, you know what, put the railings up and then hold, and then you, you know, Mr. Quinn, you're going to have to get your NOI, your notice of intent application, of course. Looking at this, as long as nothing else transpires on this project, I would be okay, especially with this coming into the season and snow and ice now just you know the 98 percent of this is done so um i mean i would be okay with just the railings on here for safety's sake okay because Mr. Part Quinn, of the, do you part have of children is over the water too so if someone slips off of there into the water as it's freezing and there, there are some safety issues they are not just the sides are three feet but then the other parts over the water that they can a kid could slip off and go right into the water as it's half frozen. And, you know, that's my concern. So you're going to put a railing up on that little wall there too, so no one falls down and bangs their head? It's it's under that. It's under the, the measurements of four feet that we need. But if they fall down and bang their head, if they fall down and bang their head, they can go get a, go to the doctors. If they fall under the ice and don't come back, you know. Yeah, you know I, what, I, I, I know. <laughs> you know what I, I, and I understand, Chad. You want to keep, you need to keep working in order to earn money. They get it. Um, yeah, and we all got to do that so, too. Absolutely. Well, yeah, so I, I have four kids, Joe. I, but they're older. My, right? you know, twenty. Jesus, uh, great. Twenty-two, twenty-one. Oh, uh, that's <laughs> definitely that's definitely a hazard. You know, some of those parties when you're when you're up snowmobiling in in New Hampshire or something. More, you more than you know. <laughs> all right. So anyway. Um, folks, um, you know, it's up to the board. Um, are we okay with just finishing the, uh, the, you know, the railings here and everything else is on hold until, um, the filing comes in. I'm okay with finishing the railings. Okay. Dan is okay. I'm all right. Robin? Yep. Fine. Railings are fine. All right. Fred? I'm fine. Darren? No vote. Okay. So the stop the stop work order remains, but they can do the railings, right? Yes. Yeah. I would just let Ted know that we're we're okay with just the railings getting done for now. No I other. Don't think they, they don't they don't have a building permit yet either. So well it, yeah. that's held up with this part here. Okay. So they'll file an uh, uh, um, NOI for the walkway and for um for this and then I'll File chapter 91. For yeah, the if you could, well, the, the, you need to come before us with the doc. All the okay. all of the, you know, the the um overview of what you need is there. And Mary, should he call you on Thursday? Um, no, I'm in Wednesday I, this week because okay. of the holiday. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting. <clears throat> so um, so Rick, why don't you give Mary a call on Wednesday? And she can walk you through exactly what's needed and um, railing work. Um, Chad, don't do anything until you talk with Ted, because yes. I don't want you to get I don't want you to get fines from Ted. Yep, I'll, I'll talk to Ted. I'll give Ted a call in the morning. Okay. Um, all right. So, Mr. Quinn is going to file his NOI. We can talk about his doc and what's been done versus what else needs to be done. We can permit it appropriately. Only railings um, provided that Ted at this point says it's okay. Chad, make sure you let Mary know when you're gonna go there and do the work after you talk to Ted. Yes, I will. And commissioners, anything else? All right, with that, um, you uh, you are all set. Uh, Mr. Quinn, we look forward to um, talking to you in the next two weeks and Chad 
I want to see more filings. Um, you, partner you with us, go. okay? You, you got it, Joey. You guys have a good holiday. Thank you. Thanks you too. Take care. Stay Happy healthy. holidays. Thank you, Mr. Quinn. Stay healthy. You too. All Thank right. you. Thank Bye. you. All right. Um, so Beacon 29 Beacon Road Certificate of Compliance. Um, uh, that, oh, that's that's yeah. yeah. We'll we'll push that off. January. Uh, we'll put that to January. Um, Twenty twenty four, actually. Okay. Um, you may also see on here peer review fees, um, Mary, um, and I, I put it out to the rest of you, look up 53G under the um, Conservation Commission uh, regulations for 53G, and then we'll circle back around and talk about um, making sure that our peer review fees are in line with the way that they sh should be done and the, uh, the amount that we're asking for. I just, I just, to, the reason I brought this up is um, we've been charging a $250 peer review fee for any new single family house that goes in and 90% of the time or 95% of the time we don't use it. And it's a ton of clerical work for Kelly. She's way behind on them. It's a big pain. So my, my recommendation is that we only ask for that if we end up deciding to do a peer review on these single family homes. We still, all commercial, we usually end up doing a peer review. So that wouldn't change. So that's just the, the background behind that. So to be thinking about. And there's yeah. probably, I don't even know how much money there is in the account. We may have like, we're sitting on like $3,000 of people's money that hasn't been returned is my guess. Okay, so it's a lot of money. And we owe it to the residents to get it back, but it's a lot of work to do that. One one thing that I'm thinking here too, Mary, is you know someone comes before us and nece don't necessarily need a 53G peer review at at the filing. They go through part of their you know they they go through their project and then they end up clearing all the way up to a, a stream and clear beyond the stream. Then we you know it's kind of like that money is in the reserve in case we say, eventually say, you know what, you have done damage, you need to do a peer review. So that's another okay. angle to look at it. So- and, but, and I think we've, you know, we've been holding it until people get their certificate of compliance, but I'm not sure that's even legal. I think we're supposed to return it right after they're issued their order of conditions and we don't well, that's, use it. That's and why so, I want us to, to yeah. review the 53G law and make sure that we're, we're doing that correctly. Right. Um, so um, chapter 91, clearly we have a lot of opportunity here with staff development and team development. Um, is anyone um, not available um, on January 3rd? Yeah. Um, really? I... If that date doesn't work for folks in their way or um, whatnot, I can talk to Chrissy um, and find out, but she just got back to me the other day. Um, she was looking at 1-3 at 1 p.m. She'd like to um, firm up what we wanna talk about um, in the training. She's looking to kind of do a quick overview of jurisdictional limit. And then I think it's important that we understand what the difference is between the, the the general permit and the simplified license. Um, and then anyone else that's got questions, I think that it's important that we bring questions. Um, if she's Wait, got how, some- How is this meeting supposed to happen in person or a Zoom meeting? Or... No, it's gonna be Zoom. Okay. But I wanna make sure that the majority of the, the, um, the, the board is there um, for it to be Number one, effective, and number two, it, you know, we all have a general idea. Monday the third at one what, one p.m. Yeah. Okay. Not Anyone else? Day. You won't. No, I'm on vacation for a couple of days. Is it something that you can videotape or something? Um. Yeah. I mean, we could. I mean, I I can ask you that. Um. Or I, think I kind of know. feel like the last time we asked for a videotape, they wouldn't do it. Yeah, because if someone pulls up, you know, if, if someone from the state misspeaks, they're, right. they're kind of doing a sideline training with, with a particular town. 
So they don't want any kind of evidence if something were to go, you know, be spoken of out of. And, and the other thing, the other angle of this too is with these trainings, we can't bring our business, like, you know, obviously we've had an issue, you know, concerns of the Wall Wheeler project. We need to talk about it in, um, you know, not tied to specific projects, but past elements of that. So I do want to make mention that, um, you know, we, we can't deliberate things because that would break up open meeting, obviously. Um, so if the first, I mean, the third doesn't work, um, I can ask her about the following Monday, maybe, or if, um, anyone, anyone else not available, Fred or, or Robin, Dan? Yeah. I, I will make myself available, whichever day you choose. Okay, all right, let me fire off an email to her tonight and, um, you know, she'll hopefully get back to me, so, um, after the third. Um, this is really important to become more educated. Well, it's to help us out in any thorny question. Obviously, you know, there, there's two different permits, which one is attached to which, and, you know, what kind of, I'd like to know the criteria, general criteria of each one, and how do we know which, which path to send someone down? Um, and also, um, Mary, um, it would probably be good to ask Kelly and uh, anyone else that's in, in, in that office if they want to, if they're available that following Monday, um, yeah. you know, following week. Um, but uh, it's really important for us. Um, Once we become more educated as a group, could that also be on our webpage? Again, this is- Well, that's, that's the thing. Um, Karen, I know you were kind of spearheading, putting together sort of a bulleted point list. Um, I'd like to spin off um, kind of like what we do with the, the bylaw and ver ver various other projects. I really think at this point, we should um, spin off into a small working group of three. It's not corn, but it's three of us kind of working together for the greater good. Um, so, um, you know, I can, um, you know, I can partake in that. Um, does anyone else want to be in that group? I do. I do. Well, okay. certainly, you're certainly including Michelle, so. Um, uh, yeah, what it'll probably end up being is because Michelle's the vice chair, it could probably oscillate. Michelle might go to a meeting, I might go to the other one, and that'd probably be good for, for training, too. Michelle's mm -hmm. got a good background in this, but I think that, um, you know, we're, we're trying to make points with residents that we're, we're obviously we're giving the wrong, we're giving the information for the opposite license, even though they both run, you know, laterally, um, there's just a difference. So, um, well, Karen, you're, you're a non-voting member of the, of the commission. You want to be a part of that too? Sure. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You know, I went through, um, remember we had a, um, a phone conversation with Chrissy on 8 21 Yeah. Um, and I went back to my notes to see if I had some clarity to some of the outstanding questions. Mm -hmm. And actually she did um, explain to us in detail what a simplified license was and a general license, license was. And basically she said, uh, and, and this is not verbatim, but a general license is really for a large, large scale yes, project, project. Indian ranch, that type of thing. Yeah. A simplified is clearly for the residential. But like what I don't have here is, um, you know, where we put the specifics on the four foot wide. Um, I, don't, I don't have any note where we talked about that. One note that I did have, and maybe we want to clarify if you talk to Chrissy in the interim, is you had mentioned to her that we're kind of rolling up the chapter 91 dock permits in the NOI. Uh -huh. I think in my notes, it, she didn't recommend that. She said to stay with the RDA so it's not convoluted with an, uh, an order of conditions. Those are my notes. I, I could have misrepresented something. That's, so if it's, that that's if it. like some of our properties, Karen, like someone's taking out the whole retainer wall 
and they're putting it back in, so they're altering. You want to you want to be mindful of always when we're when we're in this process, we're in these hearings, alteration. What is being altered at the shoreline and in the project with the land? And I mean, obviously, being a, a former or being an engineer, you want you get that. So with an RDA filing. That is typically minimal impact or no impact at all. Someone is just permitting what is already there. But when someone does an NOI, it's easier to, because it's often a, um, uh, you know, a conditionable, you know, um, not necessarily development, but it's a conditional project. So you can rule it in under the NOI. Um, you know, I spoke back when we started doing that. The reason we actually started doing that was because two people at DEP Central, one being the now section chief, told me that that, was, that, that would be a great practice. Okay. And there's actually some towns that have started doing that. So it's, it's, it's all right as long as you call out the Chapter 91 permit in any specific um, criteria with that permit. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it also cool. saves it saves the applicant money too because they don't have to pull two permits. Yeah. Yeah, I think the concern from DEP was just the fact that if you're making them go through a whole NOI process just for a dock, that's kind of overkill. Whereas oh, yeah, I didn't expect that. So in, in that case, they were saying no, just use the RDA mechanism because it's much more straightforward. But if they're coming before us for an NOI in the first place, then it's reducing the amount of paperwork they have to do by attaching it yeah. to something else that they already want. Yeah, I, I, let me just say, I pointed out the other day that it, it very clearly says in the regulation that if it's a new construction dock, yep. it's an NOI, mm -hmm. period. Yep. So, oh, uh, really? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately. And so, yeah. in fact, that's the one, um, Mr. Cloherty, we put him through as an RDA, and his lawyer, or Colby's lawyer, figured out that it should have been an NOI. So that's why he appealed that one. That one is appealed oh, because it was the, an RDA. Dan, me, you, and Michelle went to that, that site, and Mr. Lane, the lawyer, was saying that it was supposed to be an NOI. Yeah. And he was going to get back to us. Is that what they said now? I don't know what their decision was, but that's why he was saying that is because it is written in the law that it should be an NOI. No, but that's for a new construction. So his was already there, but it's a new configuration. So I don't know how they're, so they got to figure that out. They and there's been out. a lot of, you know, there's been a lot of, you know, um, you know, like, you know, for example, Steve mentioned earlier, you know, well, what about the neighbors? You haven't, you know, they don't have licenses yet. Well, we're not talking about them. We'll eventually get to everybody, but as projects come along, it's the easiest way to pull that dock permit in and, and have yeah. it, you know, have yeah. it, you might as well, you've got an open permit. That's why I always say it to folks, and I said it earlier, was, what, are you doing any other items, like in the next two years, anything else that you might be doing that we could just pull into the permit? And that way it's an open permit, and if we happen to see something going on, and you look and you see and, you know, oh, they do have a permit for it. Okay, I don't remember that, but it's there. Well, I'm, I'm surprised he was so offended at simple discussion, um, especially when he's got a 50 foot long dock that seems to like really impede the abutter because the abutter may not always be owned by Indian Ranch, um, especially where he said from, you know what I gather. He spent so much time working on this lake. I I, I was kind of surprised at how uh, yeah, how yeah. He was. But you have to understand what Steve was doing there was trying to get a dock permitted, not a specific one that that the property owner wants. He just yeah. wanted that project to include a dock, and that's why I reminded him that if you ask for a, a fifty foot long straight dock right. and we approve that's that. Right. The new property owner can't put in what they want. It has right. to be a fifty-foot straight dock. Right. How did he not know that? Sometimes he Steve does. knows more than he lets on. <laughs> yeah. He does. He does. Uh, you know, 
Yeah, there there is in the law, you know, we can, oh man. We can I mean we can bring this up, but there is a way that if the property changes hands and somebody doesn't want that particular configuration, there is um they call it something like, you know, it's like they call it a zone of it's it's called the zone of something where you can actually you've got just so many feet and so many ways to be able to configure that within that zone that the state says this is where your license goes the, you know the thing is is people don't understand like i why do i have to get a license for this and it's basically like if, if you go to a public you know you go to a, a state park this is basically a state park except it's water you are paying the state for that spot on that that connects to land which is under our jurisdiction to be able to utilize the park and that's basically the way that it was um relayed to me a few years ago that's the way that that law works so hey, like joey, renting out a parking spot joey let it let yeah. me throw everybody on a lake under the bus have you ever seen a dock license as it's supplied to the applicant included in the package is id for the dock and signs that are supposed to go up on both sides, alerting pedestrians that they have a way to, they are allowed to transit the shoreline. And absolutely go, go around the lake, find any dock that has that stuff on it. Because nobody, everybody just throws that in the trash. But well, that's, well, a, that's this, something they give people they're supposed to do. This brings up an important part, which I think that we should consider looking at policies from other towns and possible bylaws from other towns. And we don't issue the COC on that until we have seen that those are on the actual dock. That could be a condition. Well, um, and we can actually add that to the conditions now, that if it's yeah. under an NOI, we've actually, we're kind of hooking that in and we need to see proof that you have that on the dock. Yeah, I, I did say, you know, around Webster Lake, pedestrian access to the shoreline is probably a moot point. It's just not reasonable to expect that to happen in, well, in a good portion of it. In, in the law, as I stated earlier, and the reason I brought this up is the law is around because People were getting fed up of other folks saying, I can't fish, I can't follow, and I can't navigate. And that is a basic right under the Massachusetts Constitution. So along back in the back, you know, so, the colonial audience, ordinance, yes, 1631. Yes. Yep. So well, yep. and a lot of it. folks, a lot of folks don't re recognize that on our lake. So I'll it's make it up, Joey. I will, I will draft up a draft policy, or, or I should say, um, I'd like to say bylaw, but I'm not sure if that's even possible. But that, I'll, yeah, I'll draft makes, up something. And, that and, makes people nervous. But if we put a policy in place, like I have had conversations with Mary about, at least we'll get about 98% compliance. Some yeah. people might say, you know what, it's not, it's no, I, I don't need to, um, but at least we'll get a majority of compliance. So okay, after um, all days, I, I would check. Yeah, Dan, if some. you looked at, if you looked up some of the great pond towns in Massachusetts, Warwick, um, Warwick, Mass, um, I think Southwick, um, Plymouth, I think has some sort of language that you might be able to to grab yeah. and utilize. So, several so. towns have policies and, and bylaws yep. in some cases. Yeah, yeah. Um, one thing that... Tracy, one last... don't, don't put down that I promised I'd do that. <laughs> Throw it down. <laughs> um, one thing that I do want um, folks to, to think about and, in, in, um, you know, maybe do a little research if you could and, and we could talk about it further. Um, there is a legal mechanism in, in London that will take the state, the state level of permitting off, off of chapter 91 department 
and keeps the um, licensure piece in-house in the town. So that would essentially, based on how we write it, and if, if the state says, you know what, yeah, you can do this, it would make the Conservation Commission agent or a like party the official, not the harbor master, because that's got separate um, you know, uh, you know, mechanisms tied to it, but it can make the harbor master, the agent, and, and a, another body of, of the commission the sole um, person, the sole agency to award a permit. But you have to have certain things in place. And that's part of the law that I want to look up a little bit more before we, before I kind of make that pitch to the um, to the select board. But I, I'm pretty sure the select board um, will be like, yeah, do whatever you need to take to keep it in-house and make it easier for the residents. Um, and I agree with it. You know, if it takes, shaves some dollars off filing fees and we can keep the permitting piece within the municipality, I'm all about it. Whatever makes it easier for us and makes it easier for residents um, will definitely be applauded. So, hey, hey Joey. Yeah. I just sent Mary an email, which is the DEP uh, flowchart for yeah. applications. Okay. And it does it does sort out the four foot. So if we could put that up for a minute. Well, I just was looking at my email and uh, Steve's DEP number came in at six o'clock. Oh, geez, <laughs> really? You know, in this flow chart, I've looked at it. I've spent uh, just, just follow follow down. Uh, it's the most confusing thing. I think it's so well, unclear. I, I, I can I can get us through the parts that. We need pretty quick. I just got to pull it up on my side. Do you want this page? Actually, I can just go since that's in my. Oh, I didn't share. I'm sorry. I'm not sharing. Yeah. If, if you look, you get down to the w, WW24 qualifying question one. Oh. Does the fixed pile support structure measure a maximum width of four feet? No. You must go to uh, a WW06. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and that's, and, and, and Fred, that's the simplified. That's what most of our people are doing. Mm -hmm. Hardly anyone does this WW024. That's for the really small ones. Actually, oh. no, it, it goes to the W. You know, it would be nice is if we replace the WW024 with the actual language that's in the regs, which is if you are doing a general permit, which is a marine, a marina, or more than ten boats, um, I think it is. Then you go this way, and if you are doing a simplified four feet wide, and you know less than ten boats, you go this way. That's the way it really should go. Right, um, and you guys, I think there's a little confusion here because the the general permit is the, actually the smallest one. It's the small, they call, or the general license. It's the yeah. smallest, teeniest, it's a less than 300 square feet. And then there's the simplified. And I can't remember what the big one's called. It's got another name, but it's yeah, over that's... 600. And we don't deal with those for the most part. So the, the general one is the teeniest. And that's what this uh, okay. WW24 is. I mean, even in explaining it right then and there and trying to, to relay that, I mean, it's, it, it's, you know, it's so easy to, for them to cross. Yeah. Mary, I wanted to, to mention, I don't know if anybody else has noticed this or if they're bothered by it. Um, when you're pulling up your, um, like your inbox, um, you know how like you're, you're set so that you could read the first line of the emails? So like when we're looking at it, when the general public is looking at your inbox, you see the first line of these emails. And I saw one from like Dan saying, yeah, I agree with those fines. Oh, right, right, yeah. I'm sorry, so, yeah, I try not to look at my email if I don't have to, but yeah, you're right. Not all yeah. the general public is looking at those. Yeah. Well, Excuse well, me, Karen, sure. where, where are you talking about? I, I'm not sure I understand where you're seeing those emails. Right, well, like here, I have this open. Inbox. Well, in all actuality, and I mean, if you really dummy it down, Karen, um, somebody can request, and I actually know a conservation commission that they denied someone's permit, and somebody every six months 
calls up and says, I want everything that's in your in, in your email box. Um, yeah, people people can really be vicious. Um, yeah. So that Mary's inbox actually is public record. Public record. Yeah. So, but I know you get a glimpse of that person. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'd be, yeah, I would just be careful, Mary, in case, you know, because. Yeah, I um, do try to not show it. Like I try to get out of there and then share my screen. But yeah, I'll, I, I'll keep well, that in mind. <laughs> you could probably reconfigure your, in, your inbox so it doesn't show that. I, yeah, I mean, it doesn't show I can, the first I can do that on my computer. So. Yeah, it doesn't show the first line. Um, anyway, um, this is at least moving in the right direction. And if anyone sees ACEC, we do not have any ACECs here. ACECs add a whole other layer of protection. And um, there's only, I think, about, I think about, about 28 of them in, in the state. Um, there are areas of critical environmental concern. Um, so if you see AC, you see we don't have any right now. Um, although I consider our entire town an area of critical concern. Um, so with that, moving in the right direction, I'm, I'm pleased to have this conversation. Um, one thing I want to make note, um, and I understand it, but folks that... Um, do work within the municipality, don't necessarily. Um, please, 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 our meeting starts at 5.30. It has been brought to my attention by two people now um, that are within the municipality that are asking, please, if you start at 5.30, please be here and ready to go. Um, if we need to move our start time 15 or a half an hour, I don't advise on that. It's nice to start at 530, but um, just send an email to Mary if you are having an issue getting here at 530. Um, Hayden's really the only one that has expressed that to me that he um, sometimes is on a job site and doesn't get home by 530. So, um, just I want to bring that up um, gently. And then the last item, Mary, your, um, your report, you sent it out. Anything within that do you want to cover that and then we can adjourn i think the only thing there's a lot in there so go ahead and look through it people because it's i a lot of site visits i weren't wasn't able to put in other reports just because i didn't get it done i think the yeah. main one that we might want to look at is joey had asked me to go to 310 thompson road this is that apartment complex i mean they they did repave their parking lot um, he stated on the phone that they had parked vehicles here when the, during the repaving process, but there's clearly been, I mean, there's definitely been some earth moving work outside of the parking lot. This is like kind of piles of, I don't know, like they were scraping the soil. Um, there is, uh, they, oh, here the, you can see the piles more clearly. I don't know how recent it was. Yeah, this just that's that's not good. And there um, is this stream back here which goes there the wetlands, you know, a little further back. So uh, I'm not that, sure. That little, I channel, think, that little channel there is that natural or did they do that? Uh it that, looks like looks like nature did was trying to find its uh, path of least resistance again. Yeah. I almost wonder if they dug it out to drain. I'm not sure. It, well, there's dirt piles on both sides. That's why it yeah. looks like man-made. Well, why don't we put that um, on, why don't, to keep this ball this ball rolling, um, is everyone okay with this going on the next grouping of uh, site visits? And just so you know, 310 is the apartment condo complex that is across the street from Lakeside or Lakeview Marina. Um, Mr. Smith owned that for a long, long time. It's changed hands uh, more recently. I think that's why they're doing some upgrades. But I had driven by, um, and I actually noticed this project when we were looking at um, over near the marina, um, the Sullivan's uh, runoff issue. Um, kind of drove in. I just was like, oh, all right. Oh, well. <laughs> I've made a <laughs> yeah, and I didn't get to it for a while. So. Yeah, yeah. So I noticed this during uh, midsummer. So, um, 
Well, <laughs> yeah, it does it looks, actually that like bottom the photograph. It looks like in that bottom photograph, Mary, you may have animation may have put a sort of swale in there. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm wondering if it's like a, a drain. And then the whole area is low. Well, I think if you look at um you know, satellite imagery, you might be able to get based on how the, the, the land formation you can actually see in there. Um, just spilled on coffee on me. Um, where it might actually. All right. So this, okay, this is 2019. Okay. And so, and there is that old foundation in there. And this is 2013. Yeah, you can see the stream channel and how it wraps around. So if that is a perennial stream, which I think it might be. And this is um, not the stream channel I was photographing though. I think what I was photographing was somewhere in here. Yeah, it's yeah, it's right it's right there. But if uh, you know, I mean we could ask them, you know, hey, you need to you need to file after the fact and you need to provide um, you know, what kind of impact happened here, what kind of impact happened at the far end on the, say, the, the west side there. Because it looked like, um, I think they scraped all this vegetation out is, is kind of my impression. Yeah. Let's see what it looks I, like in the summer. In the sea, there's a lot of stuff in here. A, <laughs> wet, a wetland scientist will be able to find out if that's hydric soils. If that's hydric soils, then you've got a wet, you've got one aspect of wetland. You need hydric soils and you need vegetation. Yeah, and but, here's the, the wetland, here's what it shows on the, so, I mean, it's kind of, it's probably within a hundred feet, this work. It's actually, well, that's, I think the solid blue means that it is a perennial, is I mean, a, a per, yeah, perennial stream. So it will carry 200 foot buffers on. Well, actually th these, these so solid blue on this map does not mean perennial. It just means it's a stream, but, um, but we could check it on stream stats, certainly. Yeah. Well, so yeah, it's certainly, it's certainly work that was done. They certainly did a lot of grading or scraping and- They should have fought, they should have fought. Yeah. But then again, you know, someone that comes in, they just look around, they don't see water necessarily. Right. And they just think there's no wetland here. Right, um, and, 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 he, and he told me it was mainly a repaving project, which he wouldn't necessarily need to refile for, but if they did all, disturbed all this area, that is what required the, refi the filing, I think. That's my concern, but on the, I, want, I would want to know all the way to say the southwest of this photograph where the parking lot is, did it stay, did the parking lot stay in the same footprint or did they expand it? Right, that's a good question. He said it's, you know, when I talked to the guy on the phone, I did call him, he answered right away. He said it was the same footprint, but we Perfect. don't, we don't know that for sure. <laughs> Burden of proof, prove it. Um, all right, so. Okay. Possible so that, disturbance in that system. Yeah. And that's pretty much everything else is pretty much, you know. Actually, Mary, going back to the satellite there. Uh-huh. Um, over near where um on the on the east, say the east side there, where the property is for um that uh Lisa Sullivan, where she's having that erosion problem. Yeah. And the state, the state said they wouldn't do anything there because she doesn't own the property. She yeah. actually, she actually has and can prove she has an easement there. Okay. Um, and that she has, um, I think it's for two parking spaces, two, somehow it says two boat slips, but um, she has the ability to say, you know what, um, fix this. She's in her right. So mm -hmm. if you happen to talk to the, the state folks, um, you know, We'd like something done there, regardless of we'll, we'll figure out whose property is. But she has the authority on that piece of land. Yeah, and and he what he said to me is he wanted to kind of do, how did he put it, as a small project. He didn't want to like pull an engineer in because he thought it would overkill the design and want to do like a settling basin, which there's no room for. So he yeah. was gonna whatever just, it would be a good fix if they can present something yeah. to us. But th that's a major area of entry for um for dirty water and that really should be somehow slowed down number one and two it should be 
trying to get the water in, into the ground for filtration purposes as, as quickly as possible. Yeah. So I, I have to I have to go pick up my son at the train. So I'm not, I'm good. yeah. But anyway, Merry Christmas, everybody. I don't Merry have Christmas all your addresses. Christmas. I would have sent you cards. So um anyway, right, you're well, a wonderful group to work with. Have a Robin, happy new hold, year. Well, hold on, Robin. Um, because we're we're losing we're losing our quorum. So Mary, is there anything else Here left? Yeah. Nope. Um, you guys can look at the report. I don't think there's anything else terribly important in there. All right. Any questions? Um, relay them to um, to uh, Mary. And with that, I need a quorum for a vote to um, uh, adjourn Adjure? at 7.47. Bye. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Fred, do we have a second? I yeah. second. Okay. All right. Robin with the second. All right. Thank you, Robin. Take care. All right. Yeah. Merry Christmas, everybody. Good night. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, everyone. Christmas. All right. Fred, did you have something? Do what? Did you say something? No. Oh, okay. All right. Um, everyone, happy, happy holidays. Thank you so much. Stay safe with uh this virus, this pandemic. I'm I'm hoping it slows down, but please um stay safe. Thank you. Yeah. yeah everyone have a, a, a good holiday. <laughs> Any questions, Tracy? Nope. You think you're all was, set? Yeah. That, I'm going to just read through it. I think I can send it to you tomorrow morning. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> that was a little easier one than uh, in the past, but I, yeah. I don't even know if I'm going to need the recording now. <laughs> well, excellent. That's that's great. We'll see. Uh, we'll see after I start reading everything. Well, maybe I Although the only the other the the one thing that I did um 29 Beacon Road is that's a continuation. Yeah, and they had are I don't think you even really need to mention it because they had continued it before. So, I don't okay. think it even needs to go on there. Okay. Because there was no vote. Okay. Yeah. So what I'll do then is I won't even ask Anne to move the recording because I can do it on Wednesday if um, I think I can do it on Wednesday if needed. Does that make sense or shall I still ask her? Because what I'll do on Wednesday is we'll get it on the website and you can view it on the website. Or is that too late? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think I do that. I'm going to just, I mean, it's early enough. I'll read through everything. And I don't know if I'll I'll need the recording or not this time, but when I send it to you. <laughs> yeah, this was, and thankfully in the winter, the meetings are shorter. Um, so that's good. And, and Joey's trying to, because everybody's on them in town to have shorter meetings. So hopefully they'll typically go to like eight and not nine or 10, so. Okay. All right. Sounds good. See what I can do with it. All right. Thank you, Tracy. Have a good right. Christmas. Thanks. You too. Okay. Good All night. Right.